Founder and artistic director of the EA Festival is Joanne Uwe, and she joins me on the line now. Good morning, Joanne. Hello. Hello. Tell me, what is the EA Festival? It's an, an art and culture festival taking place at Heddingham Castle uh, this summer for the first time. And it's a real smorgasbord of content and performance, which straddles all kinds of categories, literally from poetry to sex to environmentalism to literature. That's quite a broad range of stuff there. Uh <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That, that's actually what, that's a, one of my missions. Is it, what, what, why is that one of your missions, Joanne, to be so broad? I think that these days people consume content with that regard to it all, always being mono category. It's very much about curation generally. For example, if you follow someone on social media, you may be interested in not just what they read, but where, what they're eating, um, what play they went to, their favorite television shows. So I don't think that content should be classified necessarily according to a single theme or art form. Now, it's quite ambitious to launch a festival during a pandemic. I know, fingers crossed with the roadmap as it is, by the time we get to that weekend, we should be in a much better place. But what made you want to launch it now? Well, well on a simple basis, I was sitting around with my, you know, basically just twiddling my thumbs for a long time. And then uh, some friends really encouraged me to just to just do it. Then the second thing was, the truth is, there were so many world-class um, elite members of the performing arts who were just jonesing to get out of the house and perform as soon as possible. So there was a great deal of goodwill to try something new and to support an inaugural event like this. And I thought, you know, there's not going to be a better time in my life than launching something as ambitious as this now. <laughs> you certainly like a challenge, don't you? <laughs> I, I thrive on those. This is going to be one out of, I don't, it'll be like my fifth startup, but in a completely different category, probably. <laughs> now, this is, um, this is quite a new business model, really, this, this festival, um, because you're going to launch a, a hybrid event um, now to help kind of get it going, because uh, this two-day live event is very, very ambitious. Tell me about the... Uh, the uh, this hybrid event, this this live stream tickets as well as in person. Yes, um, to future proof it, and not just against the pandemic and potential lockdown restrictions, which may call for social distancing or, God forbid, the outright prohibition of holding an in-person event. I wanted to launch a model which would allow us to be from the very beginning a content brand instead of just one which was reliant exclusively on in-person ticketing revenue. So that's why, I mean, I think having also been a festival goer for a long time and just watched the evolution of the industry, it seemed natural that this is the inevitable next phase commercially of the festival industry and I thought what better time than to implement it now when it was absolutely, I mean, really obligatory under the circumstances. Can you see this being the future of festivals and live events and, and arts and creative events that you're going to need to offer a real and an online option for people? Is this how it's going to go? I think that this is the way it should go, especially since let's also admit that the art sector is under a lot of incredible financial and commercial stress. And this is actually one way to transcend the ge geographical boundaries of just of in-person ticket sales and to, and to build a, a broader brand, which is not necessarily just restricted to a specific area or even auditorium. Um, as well as obviously to, to, to gain more revenue from a broader, from a, a global audience, really, depending on the, co uh, the quality of the content. Now, you've got quite a lineup uh, already booked in. Tell us about some of the, the guest speakers, some of the, some of the people that are going to be involved, and, and the I, kind of things that people can see. Okay, well, I'm very excited about the lineup because it's got a lot of just incredible creative leaders. So I'm going to kick off the festival with John Lloyd, the founder of Black Adder, Spinning Image, QI, and he is just an overall inspiration with his podcast, for example, The Museum of Curiosity. And it's very much about just that it's impossible to get bored. It's really our perspective in life, which makes things exciting and new and full of discovery. 
And then we're going to have um, Evelyn Glennie and Rosie Chan are the, one of the musical highlights of the first day. Evelyn Glennie, the famous percussionist, the deaf percussionist, and Rosie Chan, who is an incredible multidisciplinary classical contemporary composer and pianist. Um, then the next day we have a panel about uh, ethical, about, called, entitled The Ethical Carnivore, um, which is going to talk about regenerative ar uh, agriculture, climate change mitigation through rewilding practices, as well as farming in East Anglia uh, more generally. Uh, Charles Salmara Smith, Smith, the former director of both the um, National Gallery and the Royal Academy of Arts, is going to be introducing and launched it. It will be one of the first events where he'll be talking about his new book, which is entitled The Art Museum in Modern Times. And he will be followed by, believe it or not, a panel about relationships and sex, which uh, revolves around a, a, a discussion uh, with Rowan Pelling and Daisy Buchanan. So. That's just to give you a, a flavor for the type of event that it is. Oh, and, and last but not, not least, there's also going to be on the second night, the last night, a triple header musical showcase that features three very disparate musical talents from East Anglia. Talvin Singh, but arguably the world's best tabla player, Nick Voigt, who's a, a, a how do you describe her, an avant-garde um, synthesizer artist, and Tawia, who has uh, got this incredible um, pop music voice and lyricism. So that's, I hope that gives you a good foretaste yeah. of what's to come. It sounds incredible. And like I said at the beginning, very broad, but so, so interesting. And I can't think of another festival that's like this. Well, thank you. This is the biggest compliment I could hope to receive, and I, and I really hope that you'll be able to attend yourself.